hello everyone, Ogre27Kane here today and we're going to do 10 great Nintendo Switch titles, part 6. Today we're exploring some unique RPGs. Now this list will include the Vanillaware titles as well as the Atelier Ryza series, Sword of the Vagrant, Brigandine, Silent Hope, some other unique RPGs. All of these have their own unique twist and none of them are just your standard turn-based or action RPGs. Everyone is different in some way. I love every single game on this list and none of these are ranked in order because it would be fairly difficult to do so. So let's jump right in. So starting off our list here at number 10, we have Atelier Ryza. And this game is very, very different in the sense that it's not what it, you'd expect from an RPG. There is no huge save the world, everything's in peril, gotta go to the next area kind of thing. This game is totally about a group of friends and their coming of age story. Everything they go through while they're learning each of their unique abilities and how they contribute to the world. You play as the main character Ryza here, and she's an alchemist and you spend a huge majority of this game learning alchemy. There are tons of different things to build, from all of your armors and weapons, to items you use, to different aspects. There's also a great combat system, a tremendous combat system in this that is very reminiscent of something like Grandia. It looks like a turn-based combat system, but then you get into it and you realize that it's really not. It's all about how you manipulate and control everything. You can impede attacks, deter attacks, change abilities in the middle of it. It's all about structuring the battle to what benefits your characters. It's not very heavy on item usage if you have a good strategy. One of the other unique things about this game is that the artwork in it is pretty good from a small studio. It's not really what I expected and it has a really good performance. So check this game out. So Brigandine, Legend of Runercia, is on the surface just a tactical RPG. But really when you dig in, you realize that it's a whole world conflict going on. And it's all dependent on your ability to play Risk, basically. You manipulate your armies around the border of your said country, and it's your job to invade and take over other countries. They'll have their independent units stationed wherever they are, and of course, it's all about your strategy on where your borders are strongest and weakest. If you choose to bottleneck your forces and go from one path only, you'll have a much greater chance of invading a country than if you expand and attack multiple territories at one time. The game is really, really, really fun. It's, I'm not gonna lie, I highly enjoyed this game on multiple playthroughs now. And while the story isn't something that's, you know, terribly great, it's basically everyone's trying to collect all of the different brigandines and fight the end boss. But what's cool about this is how you go about building your world and building your units. The game has some really interesting artwork and it's really well done. I didn't have any problem with performance whatsoever. On top of that, each character is very unique and their stories are different. So check this one out. So here at number 8, we have Grim Grimoire once more. And this is a brand new game to me. I did not play the PlayStation 2 version as I wasn't even familiar with Vanillaware yet. At the time this game came out, nobody really knew what it was and those that did were into Odin Sphere instead. This is an RTS, yes, a real-time strategy. But the twist to this one is that it plays in a 2D side-scrolling environment. And the game is really heavily dependent on its story moving along and all the units and everything you get in it are of a fantasy nature. The game has a huge medieval vibe to it, but I will say that it is really interesting and unique. The combat in this game is not really like anything else you'll ever play and having Vanillaware's very, very distinct twist on things makes the artwork extremely smooth and vibrant and it has a great performance. The only thing I gotta say about this is I haven't played too much into it yet, so I can't speak for the later levels. I'm hoping it maintains its quality, but so far the game is pretty well done. 
I do enjoy it and I do recommend it. This is a remaster of the PS2 version once more, so I highly recommend checking this game out before it gets too stupid valuable. So up next, we have Atelier Ryza 2, Lost Legends, and The Secret Fairy. Now I'm currently in the midst of playing this game, and it seems to be exceptionally larger than the first game, which I took about 70 hours to complete, so I got a long ways to go. What's unique about this game is although it has a lot of the same features and characters from the first game, the combat system is quite a bit different. Instead of having the bar on the side that shows where each character's at in their order of attack, you have these bars at the bottom that you fill up that you can use in structure in tandem with your abilities. Now, it in essence still has the same feel to it and it still functions very much like the first combat system, but these refinements allow you to use more abilities and items in the midst of battle. It's not quite as tense if that makes sense. I do enjoy it a lot, but I have to say, the story in this game is better, but the combat is not quite as fun to me. The only other thing I have to say is that this game really truly does fit into its place with the story, and it does make sense that Gus put it together the way they did. This game truly does feel like it was built into a trilogy, and the game is centered around that. So Silent Hope is an action RPG at heart, but it has a ton of roguelike features to it. You start out in a hub world here as you're seeing, where you can collect materials at which you can use to build new materials and upgrade your weapons and armor. Then you select which area you're going to. As you play through the game, each area has a certain level of floors and a boss at the end to complete. There are tons of different materials and weapons, armors and items to find in each one, and you can use them to upgrade and enhance your character. As you can see here, you have abilities that you can upgrade and hotkey to your triggers and whatnot. And I'm playing through this second time with the warrior class, the sword and shield, and he's kind of the most well-rounded character. I also played through the game with the trickster, who's like a rogue, and they're very fast paced. The game has a ton of uniqueness to it, and each character feels just different enough. I really enjoyed this game a lot, and the collector's edition is still fairly cheap and it comes with an art book. The only other thing I'm going to say about this is that this was from Marvelous Studios, and I didn't even hear about this until after I saw it on the shelf. So it's kind of a hidden gem, and I don't think it'll stay that way for a long time. So go ahead and pick this game up, I highly recommend it. So in here at number 5, we have Sea of Stars, and although on the surface this game looks just like a regular old turn-based RPG, it is not. It is unique in its own way, and the story in this game is one of a kind, being very beautifully written and intertwined with all of the characters and aesthetic to it, the game is really reminiscent of those Super Nintendo gems that we grew up with. I highly recommend this game as I enjoyed every aspect to it. Now I have to mention the combat in specific because the combat is not, like I said, just a turn-based RPG. The game is built almost like Grandia as well, where you're trying to interrupt and stagger your opponents. You're trying to match the abilities at which you see on the screen here with the abilities which you have in your repertoire. If you can do this successfully, you will stagger the enemies and you can cause a lot of extra damage to them. There is a sun and a moon element system to this game, if you will, and you have to use these elements in tandem to not only solve puzzles, but to defeat enemies in battle. The artwork and aesthetic to this game is absolutely gorgeous, and it has a great soundtrack. This game is an homage to our childhoods and something I highly recommend. I don't want to spoil the story at all, so go check this game out.
So next up is Atelier Ryza 3, Alchemist of the End and the Secret Key. Now, I haven't played too much of this game in specific because I'm trying to play Atelier Ryza 2 through. I did play the introduction in first hour or so so I could get footage for this video. This game appears to be different in its combat system as a refinement to what they did in the first two games and kind of meshed a lot of the ideas together. As you can see here, you don't have the bar on the bottom left now, now you have these abilities on the right hand side in which you select in the orders in which they appear. The game is very fast paced and the game is extremely fun, being very colorful and vibrant in its combat and its world, and as you can see here, it's a lot more detailed than the first two games. This game really truly is the great ending to a trilogy that it should be, and I'm really excited to get into it. Yeah, I can't really speak too much more about it other than what I've seen, but I will say that the performance in this is very stable and steady, and these games are pretty well complete. There are some small updates to them, but they do have a lot to offer. I highly recommend checking out this series, and I'm excited to play this game through. I really hope that you check them out too, because they're not what you think they are. So Unicorn Overlord is probably the most unique and my favorite game honestly on this list. Not only is it very reminiscent and a callback and homage to the Ogre Battle series, but it's an upgrade and improvement in almost every way. Not only is the artwork and aesthetic absolutely gorgeous and beautiful in this game, but the story is extremely well written and very engaging. On top of that, you'll want to explore every aspect of this world as there's a reason to for almost everything you do. The game has a very unique combat system that it revolves around you building your units in tandem with each other and utilizing their unique abilities to complement each other in strategy. Then you'll take each said unit and set them on the battlefield on a course of action and basically be the general watching everything go down. It's very, very satisfying to watch your plan in motion and see how successful it is. It's very stressful to watch it all fall apart and an enemy just wreck one linchpin to your entire operation. This game is unique and very one of a kind and I highly recommend this. This game is something that you will not regret playing. Check it out. So now we have Sword of the Vagrant and I just recently did a review on this game and I really enjoy it. It does have a few minor performance hiccups here and there, but nothing that really bothered me. The game is an action RPG, but it's one that's very reminiscent of old vanillaware from back in the day. If you're familiar with Miramasa the Demon's Blade, or Odin Sphere, or Demon's Crown, or any of their awesome gems that I wish they would bring every single one back, this game is worth playing. This game was built by a small studio, and it's not something that got much notoriety when it came out. I actually discovered it through another YouTube channel, Hallowed Be Thy Game, and it is the hidden gem he says it is. It's not terribly long, it's about 15 to 20 hours, and what's really unique to this game is its artwork and aesthetic. It's not really something that breaks ground in the action RPG sector, but it is one of a kind and it's the only kind of game I've played like this on the Switch. I wish Vanillaware would bring back one of their titles like this, but until then, this game will do. It is a must play and I highly recommend it. The game has a bunch of different crafting options, you can cook at campsites, and it does have an engaging enough story to keep you wanting to see it all the way through the end. Check this game out before it gets rare. So being the last game on this list, I figured a very unique Vanillaware title was due. And this game, 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim, is probably the most unique game you will ever play. Its core to it is a visual novel, which has puzzle elements built into it, verbal puzzle elements, that you use to put the story together, and then you use time travel to jump around and figure out exactly who's doing what at what time. 
The game also has a unique combat system to it that's very plain on the surface, as all of the elements to it never really truly change but you will gain new abilities and new strategies, and the enemy will throw different twists to you as you play. You essentially are just using your units to protect this main core that sets off an EMP at the end of battle. Now all the RPG elements of this game truly are in upgrading and building your characters in this destruction mode. This is where you choose all of the different levels you want to play at any time. There is also a remembrance mode where you can choose which character you want to play in the visual novel portions, and an analysis mode where you can take all of that information and construct it into the story at which you think it's taking place. This game is really unique. Thank you for watching today's video. It was a blast to make. I upload every single Monday. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. And have a great rest of your day. This is Ogre27Kane, signing out.